morning and welcome to Carson Sports Girl in downtown Maryville on the KXCV KRNW Bearcat Coaching Show. I'm John Coffrey alongside with uh, Matt Trenton and we also have helping behind the scenes uh, Ryan Elliott and Jenny James up for this evening and we've got another good show coming up tonight that uh, we'll be talking football as well as cross country. Football coach Rich Wright will be joining us along with offensive lineman Landon Kubitschek and then on the cross country side head coach Scott Lork and uh, two runners off of his uh, squad uh, Maria Mostick and Melissa Shepard will be joining us here this evening and uh, Matt Trenton, you've got a busy weekend uh, coming up, uh, leaving bright and early tomorrow and heading out to North Carolina. Yeah, it'll be a, actually a quick turnaround, leaving Friday morning, getting back Saturday morning as well. But uh, pretty excited, Northwest Missouri State men's basketball team taking on uh, Duke in an exhibition contest there at Cameron Indoor Stadium in uh, a really historic building, going against a legendary head coach and a team that has a ton of really good young talent. So it'll be fun to see what Northwest does uh, going into that situation. You think about... Um, four players in the ESPN um, top 100 recruiting, not only in the top 100, but in the top seven um, for that Duke basketball team that we'll get to see. So they've got a lot of youth going for them, a lot of big guys. On the other side for Northwest Missouri State, obviously you're returning five of the top eight contributors from a year ago, including the player of the year in Justin Pitts and uh, the second leading scorer in Chris Ibu and Dow uh, as well. So the Bearcats kind of bring in that veteran side, I guess, uh, for this matchup. And so we'll have to see if uh, they come out and kind of uh, outlast these freshmen and hang with them uh, tomorrow. Yeah, you look at it on paper, it ought to be in favor of Northwest. <laughs> a veteran team going out there playing a bunch of freshmen in Duke. Theoretically, <laughs> maturity-wise, right? Uh, it, it's funny, too, because listen to uh, to Coach uh, Mike Krzyzewski for, uh, for Duke Talk because he was with um, – on Northwest President Dr. John Jasinski on All Things Northwest on KXCV uh, earlier this month. And he kind of spoke about how this is important to get his team out there in front of the crowd, playing in that atmosphere and, and getting them that game atmosphere against a solid basketball team that's really hungry in division to opponent like this in a, in a national champ. So uh, it's very much for Coach Krzyzewski to see what his team's going to do under that pressure. And um, you never know. You, you get in that situation, maybe the crowd, the bright lights, a little bit too big for that first game, and then you have a thorn in your side like Justin Pitts. <laughs> Bearcats have a chance to maybe hang around. We'll see how it goes. But uh, regardless, it should be a fun time and, and fun to see that they're already um, in North Carolina, already been to Cameron Indoor Stadium, um, took a trip uh, down Tobacco Road to the University of North Carolina um, where the Tar Heels play and got to check that out today, take some pictures. I think maybe shot around there as well. So really making this an enjoyable trip and kind of an extension of that national championship celebration. And I think that's a neat thing that uh, Coach Krzyzewski's done uh, with Duke and in, in bring, in inviting the Division II national champion from the previous year to play Duke every year in this exhibition. It's become a nice tradition for the Division II uh, national champion. And and uh, I think Coach Krzyzewski truly respects what takes place at Division II, and he just wants to, as he said in that interview, just wants to celebrate the game of basketball with this contest. Definitely. We heard him talk, too, about – Eight, nine, ten years ago, he, he happened to catch the Division II National Championship, realized that's some really solid basketball being played there, and, and so made that call and kind of turned it into tradition to where now these athletic departments are calling Duke to set up that basketball game, and they're so excited to get out there, and, and he absolutely loves it. And, and you're right, Coach McCollum said, too, that uh, not only Krzyzewski, but uh, the entire um, coaching staff, the administrative staff, have been um, very – uh, open to Northwest Missouri State, coming in very accommodating and really making this a, a great experience. So um, awesome to be able to have Northwest Missouri State out there. And let me tell you, you see it on TV to be at Cameron Indoor Stadium, just kind of a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity there. So hopefully those players have a chance to, to drink that in, maybe knock down a three-pointer or a dunk <laughs> along the way and uh, just enjoy it. And you'll have the broadcast of that one tomorrow. 540 pregame, 6 o'clock is a tip-off time from Cameron Indoor Stadium with that matchup. Uh, Matt Gordon and I will be down in Pittsburgh, Kansas on Saturday. A big matchup for the Bearcat football team as uh, Northwest and Pittsburgh State square off. Uh, of course, Northwest going in undefeated 8-0. and The Gorillas struggled a little bit this year, 4-4, four and four, but they've been playing some pretty good football as of late, and it should be a, a heck of a matchup coming up Saturday. Yeah, if you just look at the records, it doesn't quite feel like that same Northwest Missouri State-Pitt State rivalry we used to see played at Arrowhead Stadium uh, not too long ago. But the Bearcats have won 11 of the last 14 in this matchup. Uh, Pittsburgh State already four losses. So unless something really, really ridiculous happens, they're already out of the playoff race. So they're kind of just playing for pride at this point and playing for head coach Tim Beck as, uh, you know, he's obviously on the hot seat with a, a difficult year here. So... But like you said, this is a team that Northwest really can't come in um, 
and take lightly. They got a 27-10 win over Emporia State, who obviously ranked uh, top 10 um, once the season began and, and played here at Maryville in that opening week. And, and they've had a few struggles, Emporia State has, but they're still a very good football team with a high-powered offense. They were held to just 10 points last week. Um, and that's one thing. You look at the numbers, um, especially defensively, for what uh, Pittsburgh State does. Um, and they've been they've been good. They're right along um, the best in the league as far as scoring defense, allowing less than 25 points per game. Number two, MIAA pass defense. So hopefully the Bearcats can come out, um, get that rushing attack going, and uh, maybe knock Pittsburgh State down a little bit early and take them out of it, make them hang their heads. Because if they can build some confidence, if there's one game they want to win, it's obviously beating Northwest taking down a rival and ending this win streak for Northwest. And one thing, when you look at what Pittsburgh State has uh, had to deal with this year, too, uh, they've had some injuries at some key positions, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Receiver, Roderick, their quarterback's missed a couple games, and uh, there's, there's a little question whether he'll be able to play this Saturday or not as he got hurt late in the game against Emporia State. So uh, injuries have been uh, played a factor as well in their 4-4 four four record. Yeah, they really have. And, and with that and the skilled players, the quarterback you have going down, you essentially have to stick to the blueprint you saw them beat Emporia State with, which was come out and run the football 360 yards on the ground against Emporia. Um, their starting running back, Michael Rose, had over 200 of those. You have to stick to that blueprint in order to come out, get some momentum, and, and win the time of possession battle against Northwest. The only problem is you're going against the best run defense in the country, not only this year, but at least the past decade, it feels like. Bearcats giving up just 39 rush yards per contest. So, uh, pretty crazy numbers uh, for Rich Wright's crew there. So it'll be interesting to see what Pittsburgh State does. The passing game really hasn't been there for them, partially due to injuries, as you mentioned. So it could be a tough sledding if they're trying to run the football all day on Saturday. We'll take a quick break, and we will be back to talk Northwest Missouri State football with Lana Kubacek here on the Bearcat Coaches Show. And welcome back into the Cat Coaches Show from Carson Sports Grill, downtown Maryville, talking Northwest Missouri State football now with offensive lineman Landon Kubitschek. Landon, appreciate you coming in. Off to a decent start. Yep, thanks Eight for no. having me. Yep, Just uh, keep checkmarking each box, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, keep going. One game at a time. Is it hard going into a season, and you're human, I, I imagine it's thought about it at least a little bit, but uh, knowing after last year the team's won 30 consecutive games that it is – within reach of uh, getting a, a, a new NCAA Division II record with consecutive victories. What do you guys do to kind of push that out of your mind each and every week and stay focused for every game? Um, ever since I've been here, it's just been focusing on what's what, what's at hand that week, that, that game. So we're just focused on going 1-0 and every week and just focus on the process. Well, uh, heading down to the jungle this week, Pittsburgh, Kansas. Uh, Gorillas 4-4 four four on the year. Not kind of what we've seen over the last couple decades of what Pitt, Pitt State football has been. Um, but it seems like this rivalry game, you kind of throw out the records. When you see them on tape, getting ready for them, what do you see out of the Gorillas? Uh, we see them, they're, they're, they're front four, are athletic. I mean, 92, he's just, he's just a good ball player. He's going to be a challenge for us up front, and every week we just we just kind of embrace that challenge. And then they're athletic in the back end, and at the linebacker level, those guys fly around and make a lot of plays for them. So we're looking forward to it. When you see them on tape and you see how they play and, and the athleticism there, are you surprised at all to see that they're sitting at 500 right now and not really in the playoff mix anymore? Um, I'm, it's very shocking, honestly. The, the past four games they played, they played they played well. I mean, you look at them in film and they're competing with, like, the Ford Hayes and the Washburn. Those are all good games to watch. I mean, they're up there right there, so they're, they're a big threat to us this week. And their team that comes in, they have the number two pass defense in the MIAA, just about 209 yards per game through the air. Um, eighth in rush defense, though, giving up 171 yards uh, per game on the ground. When you have a couple guys in the backfield like Jordan Thompson, Brody McMahon, what they've been doing, is this one of those games where just open up some holes let them go? Uh, try to up front. We're trying to open up some holes for him. Uh, just look forward to the challenge. I mean, getting movement, that's our, our main job, getting movement on the line of scrimmage. So we'll just see how it goes. Coming into this year, I'm guessing nobody really expected that a true freshman, Jordan Thompson, um, and then Brody McMahon, who was fourth on the depth chart, I think, coming into the, the uh, regular season, would be the guys leading this team on the ground. Is that a point of pride for the offensive line that it really doesn't matter who's carrying the football back there, even if it was Coach Wright, you guys would be opening up holes to pick up the yards for him? Uh, yeah, this year's definitely been that next man up mentality. So, I mean, as an offensive line, we always just, whoever's back there, we just want to give them a, an opportunity to sh showcase their talents. And as far as uh, the difference between the offense, past, um, 
pass offense as well. Zach Martin's had a, a good season as well. Uh, been very accurate, only thrown one interception. Break it down for him in the offensive line. What do you prefer? You want the run block or would you really be sitting back and pass block? Uh, definitely like run blocking. I mean, when you get a double team with Huff over there, <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun to get moving on the line of scrimmage. So it's always fun. Is there one particular double team, one pancake block from this season that sticks out in your mind? Uh, not off the top of my head. Not off the top of my head. I can't name one. So <laughs> Can't name one. There's just too many out there. Uh, there? I don't know about that. <laughs> well, tell me about uh, your background a little bit uh, coming here from, uh, from Lincoln, Nebraska, playing at Lincoln Southeast High School, and, and what brought you to Northwest? Uh, in high school, I was always on a winning program, so that's what kind of attracted me here. I mean, we had, I think, 11 state championships at Southeast, and we always had, like, offensive line, like, big offensive linemen. So when I came here and then I saw, like, it was like a mix of athletic offensive linemen and big guys. It just kind of drew me in. And then the family atmosphere definitely brought me in. I mean, the professors were friendly to me even on my visit. So it's, it's <laughs> kind of just drew me here. Well, an all-state football player there in high school. You won a state title in high school as well. So carrying that over into a, uh, a winning program, is it hard going from such a high-level player um, – in high school, stepping into, you know, a Division II football team that has been so good for the last 20 years and kind of dropping back down to the bottom of the totem pole and, and, and going through that process? I mean, I think every high school player has that adjusting phase, especially as offensive line. I mean, offensive line, you're not there physically when you first get here. So, I mean, those three, four years of, like, adjusting to it definitely are, are helpful. And, uh, I mean, you just kind of learn your role here. Well, and, and you've – grown a lot over the years from playing just one game in 2014 to 11 and 15 playing every game last year and, mm -hmm. and more and more PT each year how have you grown not only physically and, and getting in the weight room with Joe Quinlan uh, but also just mentally and you kind of go up the line you know exactly where you're going to be each play uh, I think just a maturity thing I mean I've learned what four positions now so I mean I've grown <laughs> on that side of football and then just waiting my turn being patient knowing my role on the team so you don't bring down other people around you well, as a whole, Northwest Missouri State football is uh, playing at a high level once again. Take me through what the difference is of a homecoming game. We have last week a 19 nothing win um, over Leonardwood as opposed to going into that hostile environment of a uh, Pittsburgh State this weekend. Uh, very similar. We're expecting a big crowd from them, so that's what gets us excited. I mean, we played there two years ago, and I knew it was kind of a down year for them, but it was just still a great environment. We always look forward to playing there. Their fans always come out, and we got the student section right behind us, so it should be exciting. And we're getting late in the year. It's getting a little bit colder. It's getting a little bit windier. Is this the time of year that offensive linemen are expected to dominate whenever it's it's cold and the conditions aren't supposed to be good for playing football? Uh, definitely. We're, we're expected to get some movement on the line of scrimmage, and then joints start to hurt, but you still start moving people around, and then you see those defense linemen kind of wear out. So <laughs> it's a good feeling. And Coach Wright, obviously, a defensive line coach in his own right, knocking stuff over here at the table. Uh, when you see him, and obviously he's so good at what he does with that unit, um, when you see them in practice and you go up against them in the off season, how much better does that make you guys going up against the best unit in uh, uh, the nation? It's definitely a steel sharp and steel kind of thing. I mean, <laughs> we, uh, the offensive line would not be where we are right now without going against them every week in practice. I mean, they get us ready definitely physically and mentally, especially what they do up front. Now, being honest, do you get them a few more plays than they get you? Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Good answer. That's a yep, good answer. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Landon, we appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend at uh, Pittsburgh State. And hopefully bring home another win. All right, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Landon Kubitschek, Northwest Missouri State, senior offensive lineman from Lincoln, Nebraska, joining us here on the Bearcat Coaches Show. We'll take a quick break and be back with more here from Carson's in downtown Maryville. Welcome back to the KXCV KRNW Bearcat Coaches Show. We are broadcasting live from Carson Sports Grill in downtown Maryville. Time now to continue to talk to Bearcat football as the uh, head coach of the Bearcat football team, Rich Wright, is joining us on uh, the show tonight. And Rich, coming off a good uh, homecoming win this past Saturday. Yeah, I thought that uh, it was a good win. We played well. Uh, excited to have everybody back, all the alumni and and, and just all, you know, our, our former players, we had over, over 100 guys here over the weekend, and it was, uh, it was great to have them, great to get them engaged back in the program. We had a, a special event after the game where we invited our seniors up so that they got an opportunity to meet a lot of those guys, and, and so a good weekend overall. Tell me about just going through and the memories and the stories and everything you go through of so many great players that passed through uh, the halls with uh, Northwest Missouri State football. 
I mean, is, is there one or two guys that, that stick out in your mind that, uh, that will always go down as legends or maybe even a few stories of um, what kind of means to be a Bearcat football player? You know, there, in 14 years, and when you start thinking back, it, it's, it's mind-boggling. It, it's, there's not one or two guys because, <laughs> you know, I walked, I, walked out of the, I walked out of my office and downstairs to get into the locker room, and out, out pops Xavier Oman. You know, and the first thing I think of when I see Xavier Oman every time is is watching him break that 97-yard run against Grand Valley State in the Final Four, and and their their DB was chasing him, and he was watching him in the video board making cuts to go to the end zone, and and then I I think of you know you know Josh Lamberson and those guys making that pass down in North Alabama to win a football game, and I talked to Ryan George the other night. Uh, and the catch he makes in the end zone. And, and, and so it, it's when you have a 100 of those guys back, you know, it's just it's hard to pick one or two. I could sit here and fill a radio show with memories I have of those different guys from the different years. And, and you know, it's, it's fun because they still look at us and perceive us and have a lot of pride in, in what we've been able to continue to accomplish because I think they understand – more than anybody does just how hard it is to do what we've been able to do here you know over a period of time imagine it's fun just to sit back in an event like that and just uh hear the stories as uh i imagine some of the stories probably get a little bit bigger as the years go oh they get better well. definitely They're, you know everybody's a lot better football player than they were when it actually <laughs> transpired but that's kind of that's the fun part of it it's uh you know it, it's just uh it's neat to see them get back together and interact because you don't realize it, but, you know, everybody kind of disperses a little bit. And they get back here and they get into town, and some of them haven't been here for a few years, and, and, and you can just see it. You can, they, they get the, the, they're on the sideline and they start to feel the crowd a little bit, and it, you, you can kind of sense it on their faces and in their eyes that, uh, you know, that spark's still there. <laughs> and so uh, it, it's just it's, it's fun to watch them, you know, interact with one another. And, and they meet each other. You know, like the other night we had an event and, you know, there were some older guys and some newer guys. And the newer guys are like, I've heard stories of you. And the older <laughs> guys are like, well, we've watched you, you know. So it, it's, uh, it, it's just it's fun. There are so many iconic plays throughout the last 20 years, too, you can point to each season. Um, that Ryan George catch, we were reminiscing <laughs> about that earlier and found a clip on YouTube. And just kind of going back over it, how did he ever get his feet down? I don't know. Catch? <laughs> I don't he wasn't know. that big of a guy, but, man. But, you know, like you just said, plays. Okay, so here, how about this? How about the fourth and 17th play when we're way up on Pittsburgh State? They come all the way back on us, you know, and, and, and we make a play on fourth and 17. Next play, Kendall Wright goes in and scores. We beat Pittsburgh State. Or how about 2009 when Central Washington goes down and scores late in the football game? Tyler Roach goes in and blocks the extra point. Northwest Missouri State goes to the national championship. <laughs> how about fourth down and, and, and uh, tight ball game against Grand Valley State the next week? And we check fade and go Jake Soy into the end, you know, catches a fade ball on their best DB. It's, I mean, I can just roll them all day long. <laughs> and everybody remember, remembers them like they just happened yesterday. It, it's, it's amazing. Just, and, 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 you know, it's just so, it's, it's just fun. And this uh, year's team has one of those already this year. And obviously there's more memories to be made as the season goes along, but they talk a little bit about the central game down at Arrowhead this year. That's yeah. something that'll be talked about for you a You know, time. I think, you know, a lot of people continue to talk about that game for a long time. Watching Sean Bain go vertical, uh, you know, backs against the wall. We, we, we had to execute, and our offensive kids did. They did a great job. He hit the vertical ball, and, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. And, and so it's, it's, I think at the end of the day, and we talked about this one other time. I can't remember what week it was, but our kids expect to succeed in those situations and that doesn't happen by accident you know they it's something we practice and something we prepare for and so you know when preparation meets opportunity you have good fortune and and we've been able to do that in pittsburgh state the next opponent they come in with a four and four record rich and really when you look at their scores and uh, look at some of the things they've done the, the, really they should be much better than what they are four and four yeah i agree with you you know one of the things when when you sit down and you watch film on pittsburgh state and i'm not sure what what happened early in their season but they struggled a little bit um identity wise it seemed like they they, they just weren't sure where they wanted to go or what they wanted to do. 
Uh, I think they had a couple injuries. I, I know the Roderick kid got hurt in the first football game. Um, but, you know, really starting in the, in the Washburn game and moving forward, this looks like an, a, a totally different football team. They got beat bad by Lindenwood, and, and uh, since that moment they've circled the wagons, and they're playing much more like a Pittsburgh State team that you'd expect to see. You know, I watched them play Washburn tough. They went out to Hayes, Kansas, and, uh, you know, they had a chance to win that ball game. They dropped a ball in the end zone from about 20 yards out. They hit the guy right in the hands uh, that would have beat Hayes. Um, you know, played Missouri Western, looked really good against Western, and then obviously this last week looked good against Emporia State. So uh, they're trending in, the, in a positive direction. Coach Beck does a great job down there. And, and you know, they're, they're a very proud program. They've got a lot of history. They've got a lot of tradition. And, you know, we're going to – we talk about getting everybody's best shot, but I, I've really made sure our kids understand just how hard these kids are going to play this weekend because they will. And trying to match up that uh, their potent run offense against your strong run defense. Then they put up 360 yards on the ground against Emporia State. And you look at that, is, is that kind of the matchup you want, a team that wants to come in and – try to run that football against you yeah I'd like to think so I mean we want to we want to test and see where we're at you know uh, I talked to my guys earlier in the week I said I'm not really concerned to see where we are in rush defense this week I'd like to know where we are the next three weeks because we're going to play three teams that that obviously can run the football and the first one being Pittsburgh State they've kind of gone back a little bit more philosophically to to their roots they're running more triple option type stuff uh, you know they're they're, they're doing it out of the gun. Um, it, it's got kind of a more spread, modern flair to it. But it's, uh, you know, Coach Beck has a good offensive mind, and, and you can kind of start to see he's got a hand in what's going on. And, uh, you know, they're trying to be more physical. You know, when they're – sometimes it's difficult for a spread team to be physical, particularly up front. And you can see a, a huge difference in how they're trying to approach things at the line of scrimmage. So – It'll be a good challenge for our defensive line. I've been poking those guys all week, so we'll find out how we respond. <laughs> that never happens during practice, does no, it? No, never. <laughs> nope. You know, when you look at what uh, Pittsburgh State's doing uh, defensively, uh, one of the things that stands out, uh, they've been uh, uh, very stingy against the pass, uh, and but uh, teams have been able to run on them a little bit. Uh, we might talk a little bit about uh, what you're looking for them out of, the, out of them defensively. Though. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be – it'll be interesting. They've shown a couple different things, like in Emporia State, they played a three-man front, went cover two-man a lot, and, uh, you know, really didn't pressure a ton. Uh, other games that they've played, they've done more from the pressure standpoint. So it's really just philosophically what they want to do and how they want to, you know, what they see, uh, you know, coming at us. You know, the, the thing that we've been seeing a lot of so far this year, we have some big play capability, and we've had teams that have really tried to neutralize that and stay over the top and try and force us to dink and dunk things a little bit more and create longer drives. And, uh, you know, so it'll be interesting to see which way Pitt decides to go with that. I like our matchup with our front five. I, I love the way our, our offensive line is trending. Those kids are getting better each and every week, and our young backs are starting to merge. So uh, hopefully we can win that matchup and have a big day rushing the football. All right, well, Rich, thanks a lot for being with us on the show here, and uh, good luck on Saturday. Thanks so much for having me. Again, that's the head coach of the Bearcat football team, Rich Wright, as uh, Bearcats get set to take on Pittsburgh State Saturday afternoon down in the jungle at Pittsburgh, Kansas. Yes. My thanks to everyone involved with our program, Matt Trenton, along with behind-the-scenes Ryan Elliott and Jenny James. I'm John Coffey, and so long from Carson's. <laughs>